Okay, so this is basically how to make a pull ring time fuse with a time delay of your choosing, right? And we're, so we're using, this is one quarter inch Chinese time fuse, Chinese style. There's two styles of time fuse. Um, there's Japanese and Chinese. I think Japanese is a slightly better quality. And they are used for basically timing shell aerial shell bursts inside of generally inside of you know um, aerial fireworks but the thing with time fuse is that it's it burns at a very constant rate it is very amazing how close it can get so but the first thing that you should do in the event that you have time fuse and you're using it is you want to test that time fuse so what we're going to do is do we're going to do three exact two inch sections we're going to light it with this itty bitty flame so that we can very accurately determine when that powder fuse powder core ignites and then we're going to record it in slow motion then transfer it to the i use splice video editing app just on my ipad and then we're going to count exactly how long each two inch section is then we're going to take that average and then from there we can extrapolate the length needed for our desired time so i'm going to start i made a jig right this is actually just a piece of quarter inch internal diameter polyethylene tubing and what i'm going to do is just essentially put it in here it has this flat bottom which is just uh, washi painters tape two layers of it and then I'm going to cut it at the end of this um, at the end of this this tube so it's exact they are exactly two inches each sam each section um, so I'm gonna put these in a bench vise and then we're gonna light each each one of them and time it to the exact millisecond. All right, so I open that door. Alexa, turn on CO fan. Okay. All right, so we... Number two. We're going to calculate the uh, average burn rate of those right now. Okay. Now edit. Remove the slow-mo. Slider bar, slider, or the trim tool. Start point is here. right there end point there Oh, that's not the end. There. 
There. Okay. Done. Save as new clip. This is that clip. Now we go to edit. We can check the duration here on the slider. 6.84. All right, so let's pick a random amount of time. Let's do 10 and a half seconds. Three inches, 10.5. So now what's different, though, is that we're not cutting the time fuse to that length because we need to do something called cross-matching. Our desired length is essentially three inches, right? So the next step, so pause on that thought, and now we're going to really quickly divert to making a great primer compound, which we will need for this particular cross match because I'm using a fast burning visco fuse. I don't, my, uh, the cross match that I had made got wet. Um, and I will make another video on how to make that at some point, um, depending on the popularity of this video. But um, for now, we're just gonna use a 50-50% blend of antimony trisulfide and potassium chlorate. Uh, mixed with glue. Tear. Let's say this much. Ish. All right, 10.61. That's kind of arbitrary. Now we take this potassium chlorate, which I just ground up. 10.6 is our target. Honestly, uh, I don't have to be so anal about it. All right, so now we're just gonna pour well, let's mix this first while we can, while it's a powder and it's easy. Did I turn this off? No. No. All right. This is a reasonable viscosity. It's a little thick, but it's good. So uh, what, I, what I'm doing now, I'm just priming this visco fuse so that there's a very small, you saw, when, when, when the flame came out of the opposite side of this time fuse, it, go, you know, it goes down and through and then it goes boop. There's like a little flame that comes out and that oftentimes does not ignite what it needs to. Well, I shouldn't say often. Obviously, if you use the proper pyrotechnic methods then it will obviously but a lot of times um, people who build fireworks will cross match this fuse which means essentially to puncture it and then to keep you know puncturing it keeping this powder core intact and then cross you know threading a, a fuse through that and so each side of that fuse can ignite well, typically they'll do one going through this way and then one going through shortly after that one perpendicular in the event that the first one doesn't catch. So the way that works is you have essentially four little tendrils that should still be able to ignite whatever blast powder or charge or um, burst powder, whatever it is, it'll ignite whatever it is that it needs to. Um, it's just a redundancy measure. So this time, what we're doing here, because this is what I got on hand, this is fast burning visco. So this is going to, this is a very thick cross match. This is unusual, okay? So all you guys out there, don't give me too much shit. This match. And what we're going to do is let this, this priming compound. So uh, this primer, the fuse is primed with this antimony trisulfide. Um, potassium chlorate mix and you can also use there's a lot of number of other primers that you can use you can use uh, meal, uh, meal powder or mill powder those are different but um, you can use potassium nitrate sugar 50-50 um, 
There's a bunch of primer blends. So I'm gonna let this dry, and by that I mean this is what I'm showing you, and I'm actually gonna use something else, which is this one. This is uh, actually a slow burning visco fuse with this antimony trisulfide potassium chlorate, same mixture. It's just dried, and I'm just gonna literally zip tie it to a piece of visco fast burning for the sake of finishing this video when I have uh, some spare time, which is right now. So, what I'm gonna do now is take a three and a half inch, maybe three and a quarter inch piece of time fuse. Uh, we'll take this piece here. I'm gonna cut a new end because this is actually a new roll because I. And we're gonna measure exactly. I'm gonna go three. I'm, well, no. First, I'm gonna mark exactly three inches. All right. So that this is where we want our cross our cross match fuse to go is on that line. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna puncture it while whilst it is not. It, all right. So I'm puncturing it down here where there's. Uh, still, well, while it's still connected, uh, so that it'll it'll have the powder core will have some support. If that makes sense, we just want to make sure we center it on the fuse like that, and send it. This is a grommet punch, by the way. All right, so now we have this side. So that leaves a very clean cut um, opening for this primed fuse here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is we are not using both ends of this fuse we are just banking that that is going to work beautifully. And so I'm going to just add 2P10 to the outside edge of this. We do not want this to penetrate into the powder core or else the fuse will not work. And the activator. That's 2P10, best glue on earth. All right, so we've also filled that void, that slight void, with some of this primer. And um, so this distance here is at exactly three inches. Now we will cut this end here. And then I will put some CA glue on this just so that the powder cord does not fall out during handling we'll let that dry dim this a little bit So now, this is a commercially made smoke device that is not on table one of the ATF memo released November 2nd. That's what I will say about that. Obviously check with local laws and state laws as they vary. There's a lot of misconce misconception and misinformation about the November 2nd memo. Everybody makes these videos with thumbnails that say ATF banned smoke grenades and there's so many of them. I mean, not just that, but it's just, they didn't ban smoke grenades. They re remain an exemption. And there was a very specific list, which was outlined on the third page of this memo in figure one, which is a, which is a table and it lists, uh, you know, very specific examples, but this is not one of them. So it is still legal. We are going to take this 
mix that we just made and we're going to use it as a glue right and so on this device i took out the ignition system and the fuse and everything all that it is is the colored smoke mix that's compressed and cored they ha they do a very smart job of 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 how they design this so what we're going to do is we're going to adhere the end of this fast burning visco fuse to the bottom of this device here we're just going to glue it with this big old blob maybe thin it out a little bit but we clip the edges whatever and just shove it down there and we're going to let this glue dry I'm going to tape this in place with some washi tape. And then I'm going to put this on the dehumidifier along with the time fuse assembly that we just made. Oh, I almost forgot about the pull pin assembly. So, um, what we have, this is one of those ignition cups, which I don't shut up about. This whole video is about them. Um, this one, oh, this is an ignition cup. This is a 5 16th inch internal diameter pyro tube. I slipped the cup into this tube and I pushed it up with this dirty Q-tip. Uh, the Q-tip is so that it doesn't damage the inside of that. Now what I do is punch this hole on the side of the tube a little bit in the corner right right there but give it enough room so that it has some strength right so this is a grommet punch or something i think it's a grommet punch i got this at home depot it was like 10 bucks 10.92 or something all right so now we punch that tube right and now we put this grommet this grommet came with this plier set it's a general tools very low quality piece of crap but it's all i could find home depot also um, so Home Depot makes has an affiliate link for the channel, not this channel, but has some kind of, uh, there's some way to get 10%. Basically what I'm saying is check the description. If I have links to these products and use them, please, if you're going to go get them at Home Depot, you could also get them on Amazon and I don't have links for that. So one thing to note is that this, oh, let me stand up and make sure you're focused. This grommet. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, this grommet has a flared side and then a not flared side. The, the Obviously, the narrow part is the unflared, right? So you'll notice that there's two sides when you punch these things. There's the flat side and then there's the weld, kind of an Im Im impacted side here. You see how it's dimpled in and here it's flat. So I learned that you should put the flared side of the grommet into that dimple because uh, it, the, whole, the whole assembly here is stronger that way. Now we take this grommet punch and we put the pointy end. Wait a minute, I'm curls it over. Yeah, the pointy end goes into the narrow end of the grommet, right? And then when we push it down, It flares around this back backside. It flares around this flat side of the grommet. All right. Anyway, so what this grommet does is it reinforces this ring in this dinky cardboard tube. It reinforces the ring that's going to go in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around my finger, and then I'm going to get that yucky Q-tip. Oh no, here's another one, another yucky Q-tip. I'm going to push this down with the Q-tip and pull out the slack in this in this string. Do not pull the string solo. Do not pull the string alone because you will ignite the igniter. Um, all right, now we need a key ring. This is the difference. I don't like key rings normally because they're weak. They're weaker than these. Um, these are half inch half inch electrical conduit lock nuts and they kind of look cool um these are my preferred ring pull thing but you can also use a key ring 
And so what I'm going to do here is tie. Uh, let's see. I'm going to tie a constrictor hitch, which is one of three knots discovered in the last century. Knots are discovered. They're not invented because they're essentially mathematical or geometric pathways. And it's a matter of discovering them. So anyway, I'm not going to go into, wait, uh, it comes in like this. No, it comes like this around and down and through um, anyway the constrictor hitch is awesome and that's how it looks like that's what it looks like it's a clove hitch with an additional overhand knot but uh, I'm not gonna go too far into this because I gotta stay focused and this video is long as fuck all right so we're gonna I'm gonna pull the the slack up on this and then I'm going to pull this slack. Wait a minute. I'm still going to be left with some some dangly. And then before I completely tighten that constrictor hitch, I'm going to put in some CA glue. Oh, that's nice. Oh, when I was little, I was obsessed with knots. Oh, my God. We we had an RV, and um, we go on these big, long road trips cross-country every, like, year. We do at least, like, drive down to Florida. And I would just sit up in the loft of the RV or lay up in the loft and just read, learn about knots and play with knots. I was obsessed. Anyway, I remember all of them. But... All right, so we're putting CA glue on that constrictor hitch, right? Tighten it down. Oh, yeah, that, that goes very fast. All right, so we have a little bit of slack in that line there. I'm just going to spray activator. Is this a magnet? Uh, and now I'm going to take this, cut off this excess here. And then, oh, I should leave this separated whilst, whilst I'm, whilst that glue is drying. All right, so now what we're doing is I'm taking this key ring and, all right, here we go. I'm taking this key ring pushing this through down here. So now we have, whoa, we have two, we have this key ring on one side of the grommet hole and it allows us enough room, sorry, I just bumped that, it allows us enough room to put in a hitch pin, which is essentially a safety, right, for us, all right? So there's that assembly. So now we have our pull pin assembly and the time fuse assembly. I'm going to glue down this. Whoa. Whoopsies. Spray a little activator in there. This one's going to be oriented this direction. So the reason uh, this is a little bit better, it, what we're going to want to do, though, is to cover up this with some foil tape because we do not want any ignition gases from this tube to skip over this time fuse and then hit this ignition. Um, so we do need to seal this up. You know what? We should seal this up with CA glue also. Uh, it'll, it can vent out the back of the fuse. 
the um, gas the gases from the time fuse can vent out the back of this pulpin assembly but it's very important to shield to shield this igniter from premature ignition you know in a in a redundant way not just you know one thing All right, we're gonna let this uh, all cure. This can continue to cure here. Whoa, look at that, it's a little white. Oh, it's from this silver. Yeah, it's a paint on this uh, pyro tube. All right, it's gonna dry and then uh, we'll be back. I mean, we is in the royal way. Okay, we are back, this is dry. Um, so what we're gonna do is take this tape off mm -hmm. this is what this looks like now I gotta punch a notch in this it looks like we got that hole I just punch two just just to give it enough clearance on this particular one because I'd like to avoid bending the time fuse if possible. Well, so here's the thing. The time fuse cannot really endure a sharp 90 degree bend because the powder core deforms and not only will it change the rate of the burn, but it'll also pinch it. You know, it'll pinch it off. So if I take, this is what we adhered in with that uh, primer glue compound. We pull this through the side and then push this through the side <laughs> and then zip tie this. Two just for redundancy. All right, and now I'll trim this. Cut the excess here. And yeah, so we basically have this like this, and then I'm going to trim off this excess time fuse also. Hit it with some, some CA glue and activator. You know what? I'm going to trim off this part too because this is just more stuff that can flare up and burn you. Gonna activate that quickly because I don't want I don't want it to uh, penetrate in. All right, so now I'm also gonna glue the side of this here. Uh, anyway, so we're just gonna wrap this up in some electrical tape. But I'll do one loop around the top, and then I'm going to add a foil cap on this. Here we go. Now, zip this bad boy up.
when I was little, my dad, uh, so I'd always go into our workshop and I'd always, man, I loved electrical tape. I would, I loved all tape. I would tape up hockey sticks, baseball bats. I didn't really play with much of that, obviously, because I was a weirdo who hung out in his dad's workroom and invented things like spring-loaded bottle openers and crap. All right. Here you go. So this is a, I think it's a red smoke grenade uh, with a time fuse of what was it? Ten and a half seconds. So we're going to test this out, see how it performs, and then you guys understand the concept. The biggest things to remember are twofold. Well, there's a few things to remember here. One is that I, we are not building, these are not precision crafted devices. These are, these are improvised devices. They are kind of ghetto and they are like, you know, more of a, survivalists tactic if you will um so we need to keep our ignition assemblies on the outside of the devices we're putting them on uh because we we are not 100 percent ensured that the containment from these igniters is going to stay is going to stay in where it's supposed to you know what i'm saying so although we try to seal it up as best we can when you put any sort of Lamb, well, I should say you put a fuse inside of a tube, it goes faster. Um, like ex exponentially faster. That's basically how black match works inside of uh, the aerial shells and stuff. So we, all right, so we have the igniter contained in a tube, which will be vented out the back along with the smoke and um, pro re uh, products from the time fuse combustion. That should be coming out this, it'll be venting out this hole, and then it'll ignite the antimony trisulfide slash potassium chlorate primer mixture and the fast burning visco fuse. The fast burning visco fuse will go down through the core, it'll skip igniting the upper and middle part of this uh, basically compressed pellet of some sort of, well, whatever, the colored smoke mix. It'll ignite the colored smoke mix from the bottom with another primer um, blob of that same antimony trisulfide potassium chlorate mix. And then that should ignite the smoke mix from the bottom up. And there's a large core here, so it's going to be circumferentially burning, and it should really plume out a lot of smoke, vibrant smoke. The reason we have it ignite, or the reason that the designers of this uh, device have it ignite from the bottom is because when the as this smoke mix burns it leaves a a matrix basically of it's a sort of a sugar skeleton matrix and what happens is, is as it burns down the smoke has to pass through it on its way out and what happens is is it loses coloration it loses the vibrant color the vibrant color is from organic it's from solvent dyes which are just powdered dyes and and the the, combust the reaction that occurs, the combustion, is a dispersal mechanism. It, it's not, we, we do not want to include the colored smoke products as, a, you know, a product of the reaction. They're not going through the reaction. They're a carrier. Or, I'm sorry, they're a passenger on the reaction. So they just, this is just a means of dispersal of powdered dye, essentially. Um... So, so you'll notice, you may notice color variation in the, in the smoke device as it's emitting the smoke. It might be bright and then bland, bright and bland, bright and bland. And that is from, you know, the smoke having to pass through that, that matrix of sugar, burnt sugar, basically, and whatever the heck it is. But, all right, so this is done. We're going to test this out and see how it goes. Pull the ring pull. Okay, I'm running a stopwatch. And I'm going to be slowing it down when we get close to the target time. Here we go. Bam. 10.41 seconds with a target time of 10.5. That is insane. Our little homemade igniter was within nine hundredths of a second accurate. That is absolutely bananas. Pull the safety. 
Pull the ring pull. Should be 10.5 seconds. Oh, that's a dual man. Cool. I'm gonna tip that over. Oh no, it'll start coming out the top too. Oh no, I just put it in straight up upside down. 